Yeah, man. Flat drop, 101. Shout out to the try. Worlds beyond the pole. Yeah. We've been digging on that, uh, you know, those maps showing that land beyond the barrier. So let's get back into this F. Amadio Giannini with a dragonfly perspective, man. <laughs> let's get it from here on page 31. The connected universe, mistress of deception. Let us remember it is the brain that sees and that the human eye is only a faulty window which shows us but an infinitesimal portion of the universe about us. The human eye is only a faulty window. <laughs> Dig on that. So they have a figure here which shows uh, the stratosphere showing that any part of Earth's luminous outer sky as proven or as proven is just another star or planet. Any part of the Earth's outer sky, luminous outer sky, is just another star or planet. Which means what? It's just more land beyond the pole. So this figure one indicates the deceptions experienced in the telescopic observation of the universe about us, but it is not intended to show the true contour of the universe whole. It is meant to express only the salient features of physical continuity. It shows how all connected land and sky area of the universe have positive continuity with the earth. But it also shows how every sky area of the universe must deceptively appear to telescopic detection as globular area. And that deception of globularity imposes the delusion that the areas are isolated, connecting areas or parts of the illustration's luminous outer sky curves may be considered, quote, star areas between the planets, quote unquote. Though the illustration shows them all more or less alike, there does exist variation in their luminous depth. But they all, but they all are areas of the luminous outer sky surface of the universe. So let me get that back. There does exist variation in the luminous depth, but they are all areas of the luminous outer sky surface of the universe. All areas of the sky surface, right? Let's go. Variations in luminous depth result from differences in intensity of gaseous sky content. Such variations in turn develop differences in the astronomer's spectrum and spectroscopic analysis. All luminous areas of the universe illustration are in common with the universe it represents observable parts of an infinitely continuous and unbroken outer sky surface. Monaga, holla if you hear me. Unbroken, man. So they sold us on an inverted theory. They sold the whole world. They got the world talking about blasting into outer space as if there's disconnection, as if there's space, <laughs> just blackness, space in between ball, globular, globular, globe like planets, spherical objects. <laughs> 
And how would you ever know? So the only people that would ever find out must be a part of <laughs> Love to Kwame, man. The go along, get along game, man. I mean, he ain't lying, man. He ain't lying to you, man. He's using his platform, man, to kick off, you know what I'm saying? A whole nother wave, man. Watch out for it, man. And, you know, I appreciate how it comes, where it comes, when it comes, man. Truth. Truth is truth, man. No matter who you are, truth is true. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what we dig it off. So what's the truth about the sky? What's the truth about space? Is there outer space? Or is it extra Tora <laughs> terrestrial, right? More land, the terra this. Terra what? Terra Sancta, holy land. Terra Vista, right? So more land, man. That's all we're talking about. They can't fit on their little ball globe of, you know, 25,000 circumference, whatever miles. Come on, man. They can't keep making that ball bigger. You show them. Hey, look at these land masses that are bigger than Africa. Look at this land mass that's bigger than Africa, America, Asia, all put together. That's what we're finding out. That's what they're finding out, that there's more lands, huge lands. What did Tao say in the cities of gold? You see how this all connects? He says, my land was the oldest one. Before it broke into pieces because something went down, some type of... Super solar war, cosmic war, dragon war going on, right? Come on, we're talking about the mistress of deception. And the deception is that there's space. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's space to roam. I'm saying there's not outer space. You're not going to have to get into a rocket ship to get from this land to that land, from this plane to that plane, from this planet to that planet. It's plane to plane. God is going insane. We're talking about deception, man. Deception. Such variations in turn develop differences in the astronomer's spectrum and spectroscopic analysis. All luminous areas of the universe illustration are observable parts of an infinitely continuous and unbroken sky area. They say in common with the universe it represents. Let's go. It covers underlying, underlying celestial land, water, and ice as it covers such elements of the terrestrial. More land, my naga. More water. The same water, not different water. It's not a different atmosphere. You don't get to Mars and you can't breathe. It's the same Earth. It's just further across the barrier, man. You're looking up at the sky, what they say about the human eye, what they say about the human eye. That was a, a quote, a quote at the top. Let's read it again. Let us remember it is the brain that sees. <laughs> so whatever they hijack your brain with. Like the globe, like the spherical ball that you think you're on spinning around at eleven hundred miles per hour, man. You don't feel no movement. You flying at 67,000 miles right now, my Nagi. My Nagi, is you flying at 67,000 miles per hour right now? And you ain't running to nothing yet, right? No collision with nothing because the space is so grand. You just flying at 67,000 miles per hour, spinning at 1,100 miles per hour on a wobble, my Nagi. On a wobble, my Nagi. You wobbling. You wobbly wobbly. Drop, drop, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> you wobbly wobbly, man. How can you meditate, man? How can you ever have one still moment if you're spinning and flying at 67,000 miles per hour all your life? Can you imagine being on a spaceship all your life? I'm just saying, my nigga. Wakey, wakey, man. Wakey, wakey. Let's go. Let us remember it is the brain that sees and the human eye is only a faulty window which shows us but an infinitesimal portion of the universe about us. 
the human eye don't show us nothing. You're seeing reflections and refractions all over the place. Bouncing off the crystal firmament, my night. Water in the sky. It covers underlying celestial land, water, and ice as it covers such elements of the terrestrial. There is also shown the region of atmospheric density between land surface and the inner blue sky. The distance is the same at celestial level as it is at terrestrial level, and the oxygen content is sufficient to sustain vegetation and life at celestial level. It's the same atmosphere, maybe cleaner. <laughs> you know, we, not we, they wrecked this place, you know what I'm saying? But Hawaii got it. Hawaii got us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's all happening, man. It's the same vegetation in the celestial. So when they talk in the heavens and do they eat in heaven? From a re from a religious standpoint, they got it in your mind that you're talking about heaven as some place that's far above you. <laughs> Giannini's trying to get it through your mind, the orientation that to get above you, you just got to go straight. And the octaves that are above you, the ether that is above you. Now you're talking about, you know, saying now you're talking about the throne. My God. But all that celestial cosmos stuff, all that outer spaceness is straight. My God. straight. My God. So now you can see, OK, well, in terms of north, south, east and west, it's all relative, depending on where you at. I mean, where's the magnetic north? It, you know, somebody might be on this side of the magnetic north. Somebody might be on the other side of the magnetic north. But north ain't up. North is straight towards the magnetic. You know what I'm saying? The uh, the mountain, whatever they're calling the magnet, the magnetism. I love the natural by law. Popping off, man. Another naturalist, man. Episode, what was it? 20, 26, 20. I think it was episode 20, man. Love to my bro, natural by law. Popping off, man, and just being a consistent kind for the Nagas. Hey, man, I, I'm going to drop it, man, on, on the IG pretty soon. But the bro just hit me, man, with the care package of care packages, man. Y'all got to hit up naturalbylaw.net, naturalbylaw.net, and just check out this crystal water flow, man. I mean, this stuff is J. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. To crystallize your water, you got a pure, I think it's an obsidian. I think I got some dragon, you know, some some dragon fire, you know, popping off in my water. It's a beautiful water bottle with a crystal like inside of it to crystallize the water. I mean, it's beautiful, man. Go check out naturalbylaw.net, man. I'm just saying, man, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about the magnetism. So north is magnetically wherever it is in relationship to where you're at. Your compass always goes north, right? It ain't going straight up. Don't you notice that, man? I mean, that's a body bag for the illusion. <laughs> north ain't got nothing to do with up, man. <laughs> All right. And south will be everything opposite of north, right? So it'll be out, like pushing outward. <laughs> East and west is counterclockwise and clockwise. So if you have to uh, time travel, your machine must go clockwise or counterclockwise a certain uh, distance of time, distance and time. I mean, you know, you calculate it. Don't try this at home. Don't y'all just be popping off time machines. You know, I'm just saying, you know, my balcony surface know that we got some, you know, time travel drop. You know what I'm saying? Brewing. Let's go. I'm on page 32. There's also shown the region of atmospheric density between land surface and inner blue sky. All right. So in the Copernican concept, of planetary isolation, the sun is assumed to occupy the center of the dark stratosphere. Connecting outer sky surface, sky areas of the universe are assumed to be isolated units, and they are assumed to perform a rotative movement around the sun center of the mathematically prescribed universe subdivision known as the solar system. That solar system arrangement, which embraces the Earth, represents something of a combined celestial and terrestrial pinwheel. 
to make for easier comprehension of physical continuity, the pinwheel solar system center or sun has in a way been pulled out to afford it reasonable placement as a guide or leader for the entire connected universe. Now we're talking about a connected universe. Think about that. Not a disconnected universe, not a universe with outer space, but a universe that has plenty of space to to travel. But you're not going through no rocket or no rocket ship and no dark uh, vacuum of nothingness like they sold us. <laughs> I used to want to be an astronaut, man. I'm personally, you know, affected by this, man. But if I can do it, my naga, you could do it. Because I, I wanted to be an astronaut, man. You know, I, I wanted to see what they talking about. <laughs> and then you get that high up and then it's like, hey, man, you really want to know the secrets, man? I mean, do you want to pass the program or not? The secret is, <laughs> we ain't going nowhere, bro. There's more land beyond the pole. <laughs> We in water. This is a film set. This is a film studio. We we in water right now. <laughs> Come on, man. To make for easier comprehension of physical continuity, the pinwheel solar system, or sun, has in a way been pulled out to afford it reasonable placement as a guide or leader for the entire connected universe. As the illustration shows, every previously assumed isolated area of the universe whole, including the Earth, holds its original position in the universe structure, and every area maintains its daily and yearly relation to the sun. Accordingly, the illustration shows how the land and sky of celestial, celestial extend to and connect with the Earth's imaginary pole points. So, Let's read it again. This illustration shows how the land and the sky of the celestial extend to and connect with the Earth's pole point. So everything you're thinking about celestial is connecting more Earth, Monaga. It's not a different Earth. <laughs> It's another earth point. It's another earth pond. It's another connectivity of the same earth plane. And that's the trick that, you know, the hijack has put on the people with their heaven because they can have their own heaven in the celestial, right? And you're thinking that they're in some other, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, atmosphere, some other, you know what I'm saying? Nah, they ain't up there in the throne room with Hawa. They ain't up there with Hawa. You dig? They can't see past the barrier, my night. They can just get so far outside of the, outside the ring, out, out, outside the wall. And that's their heaven. That's their heaven. They say, well, I promise you uh, 72 virgins and yada, yada, yada. Well, maybe they can make that happen in their land. <laughs> maybe that's what they do in their land. You did? They say, hey, man, you do this, you do that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's all energy, frequency, and vibration. You're talking about high tech, my naughty. So, you know, who knows what they're capable of, you know, taking on some joy ride, taking your frequency on some joy ride to another plane, uh, you know, place beyond the plane, you know, another plane beyond a barrier. And on and on they go. But they make a lot of promises, don't they? And these celebrities that go missing or whatever the case, a lot of controversy around their death. Nobody saw the body, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, hey, hey, rest in power, man, or or live in power to, you know, Tupac Shakur, man, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of Pac, I got a lot of Pac fans in the ether, you know what I'm saying? You know, we we dig, man, you know what I'm saying, the realness, man, but you know what it is, man, it's, um, <laughs> it's like this whole uh, side, you know, I'm somebody on the side, you know, had a theory. You know what I'm saying? And they said they saw a helicopter, you know, at the scene. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I can't confirm or deny none of this. But they said they saw a helicopter take Pac somewhere. You know what I mean? And then they said there was no helicopter. You know, but if there was a helicopter, 
You know, where did he go? You know, people say South America. And I, you know, there's, there's other lands beyond the pole. I know it's like outer space, though, right? It seemed like outer space to see another earth, <laughs> another earth plane, more mountains, more, more trees, more, more water, more oceans, right? You thought the creator stopped creating, man. That's your problem, man. You thought the creator stopped creating. And the creator is the creator. So when you got Genesis popping off, you got to think like, this is the Genesis of what? You talking about this earth, this earth pond right here was being, you know what I'm saying? Was popping off right there. Because that's not the, that's not the beginning of all the earth ponds. You know what I'm saying? That's not the beginning of all the earth. Man. That's the beginning of this earth right here, the formless, the void, you know what I mean? You know, the frame and the shaper had to frame and shape with matter that really already existed. So you're coming back into an awakening, man. You know what I'm saying? Of, of a connection that you have with each other and Hawa, your breath of security. Let's get a little more for the disc, man. Hey, we're just getting some flat drive 101. You know, real cozy, some Spanish guitars and 432 hertz. You only can hear it here, man. 432 to drop dot com. Download the app, man. A hop to the dragons on the wall. All right. So. According, accordingly, the illustration shows how the land and the sky of the celestial extend to and connect with the Earth's imaginary pole points because it's an imaginary you know what I mean it, it's just your imagination man that there's some type of point <laughs> that everything stops but you need that on a ball because that's finite a ball is a finite situation so it can't get bigger but then they try to drop hints oh well everything's expanding and then Admiral Byrd said the earth shrink so what does he mean by that that the lands that are outside the pole, so-called, are, you know, coming inside, you know, it's just shrinking like stars are falling from, from the sky type of thing. I mean, think about it, man. The stars are falling from the sky, right? I think in Revelation, I mean, one of them scripts had got the stars falling from heavens at the very end. Now you can think about the stars as all these other, you know, earths, you know what I'm saying? All, all these other earth ponds, you know, that are all spread out that maybe at one time were all connected. The same type of Pangea you got with America, Africa, India, and all this, Australia. You got the same Pangea popping with the rest of the Earth plane. So does the stars falling from heaven coming back to Earth have to do with the rejoining of the land? Is all the land going to be one again? <laughs> And there's going to be one shepherd of that land. And, it, and will it be promised land for you? Will you have plenty of space? Hey, man, I'm going to go check in with Five Eyes, my. He got all these islands over here. <laughs> like that. You see how many islands there is, man? <laughs> oh, man, he got all this land right there. Hey, man, I'm going to holler at yourself. He got like this whole plane over here, man. And, you know, it's going to be like that. Oh, we're going to holler at the battles? Oh, well, you already know, man, the, the battles got, you know what I'm saying, all the valleys and the mountains and everything in between, you know what I'm saying, like, oh, that whole region, yeah, you got to get out that barrier, save us up the Prester on the way to highlight the battles, man, and yeah, we in battle time, man, for the dismount, imaginary pole points, it shows that we may move beyond the earth without falling off the edge, quote unquote, or falling off the ends. The following descriptive material is conjunction with the illustration in conjunction with the illustration should afford ample guidance for comprehension of the factual universe as it was created. Number one, the dark center represents the perpetually dark stratosphere surrounding the terrestrial and the celestial. It is part of the dark void of infinite infinity wherein the universe whole was created Two, the luminous outer partial disk to be observed against stratosphere darkness represent the skylight developed over all areas of the earth or of the universe 
a continuity of the same blue sky we observe from land surface everywhere on the terrestrial is seen by inhabitants of every other universe area when they as as do we look up or out from their respective land surface position so they looking up or out at you and you look like a star <laughs> or a plane right luminous man I, I mean imagine if they're all cities like this lit up you know what I'm saying I mean you know <laughs> let's go and looking through their inner blue sky at night they observe the luminosity of our gaseous outer sky areas in precisely the same manner we observe their outer sky luminosity against the darkness since their lenses cannot be expected to penetrate through areas of our luminous skylight and detect the land under our sky it is most likely that they have deduced as erroneously of of our and as we have of their land <laughs> So they have deduced as erroneously of our and as we have of their land. I mean, are they being fooled too? I mean, do they think they're on a spinning ball? <laughs> Three, therefore, the inner side of the of all outer luminous disc like areas of the illustration may be understood to represent the familiar gas gaseous sky envelope observable from any terrestrial location as our particular blue sky from all other land areas of the universe the blue sky likewise represent or seen represents the particular sky of inhabitants of such areas whoa from all other land areas of the universe the blue sky likewise seen represents the particular sky of inhabitants of such areas in as much as recent US naval stratosphere photographs of outer sky areas prove them to be luminous so they were already taking pictures of these outer sky areas or lands beyond the pole the US Navy my nigga back in the 20s man the 20s man the 20s and they say that oh man Flat Earth theory. What you talking about? You've been taking pictures of the what they say? Outer terrestrial sky areas. The Navy. They, they had a stratosphere photograph, man. You dig? Which proved them to be luminous and presenting the identical appearance of celestial areas. Confirmation is had that there exists the same gaseous sky content for the celestial as it is known to envelope the terrestrial since the luminosity of out of outer terrestrial sky areas corresponds to that of outer celestial sky areas it follows that atmospheric conditions underlying the sky envelope where our celestial cousins dwell must correspond to atmospheric conditions prevailing at terrestrial level thus the inner blue sky must also correspond throughout the entire universe so they're gonna see the same inner blue sky wherever you are the same sky you know maybe different stars or you know different you know, that's an interesting thing you know how did it you know how does the horoscope or the celestial configuration look you know in the lands and the further outside the barrier man right here for the dismount our experiments show that without the existence of an inner blue sky of gaseous content, there could be no luminous outer sky. Mm. So you would need an. This is our experiments show that without the existence of an inner blue sky, there could be no luminous outer sky, mm. which is an expression of sky gas to be observed over terrestrial or celestial areas. Hence, any Martians, Venetians, Jupiterians, or Libra Librans looking up or out from their respective land positions are during the day permitted to view their gaseous blue sky envelope with the same varying depth or shades 
of blue that we observe in our blue sky. The depth of blue will depend upon atmospheric conditions prevailing at the various celestial locations at the time of observation. Further, as the celestial sky chemical content or gaseous intensity varies from time to time from place to place, as does the content of our sky, it produces a corresponding variation in the intensity of outer sky luminosity to be observed against a dark stratosphere by remote observers everywhere. Therefore, the inner areas of the illustration denoting terrestrial and celestial sky as observed from land surface should be, should not be a constant blue depth, but the same or by the same token, the outer sky luminosity will not be constant, but there are variations in luminous quality as will be later shown Variations in luminous sky movement produce or accompany change of blue and luminosity or luminous sky expressions. At night, inhabitants of all other parts of the universe observe seemingly globular and isolated areas of our luminous outer sky in the same manner as we are permitted to observe luminous, seemingly globular, globular and isolated areas of their sky they are permitted to see only the outer luminous expression of our sky as we see only the outer luminous expression of their sky or luminous areas. So we see only the luminous areas of their outer sky. Since their most powerful telescopes cannot penetrate through our skylight, they cannot hope to see our land or our blue sky as we see it until we arrive on the land under their blue sky. <laughs> so what do they see? Just twinkling and light, you know, lights traveling. <laughs> as our most powerful telescopic lenses cannot penetrate through skylight of the celestial, we have been unable to detect the land and vegetation under the luminous sky envelope, enveloping the entire celestial realm. Moreover, over the luminous outer surface of our entire terrestrial sky, which we know extends unbrokenly, other dwellers of the universe are compelled to observe millions of apparently globular and therefore seemingly isolated bodies. They are luminous sky areas and their number would depend on the power of observing telescope lenses and other physical factors herein described. Therefore, or nowhere throughout the length and width of our terrestrial land and sky, or throughout the endless land and sky of our created universe, do discs, spheres, or globes actually exist. Let me say that again. Number seven. Nowhere. Nowhere. No where throughout the length and width of our terrestrial land and sky or throughout the endless land, endless land and sky of our created universe. Nowhere do disc spheres or globes actually exist. F. Amadito Giannini is telling you this back in the 20s, my God, 1920s. A hundred years ago, this ain't no new theory of this and this and that and this. This is old recon that's been swept under the rug. Put it, put it into the minority files of the stuff you ain't supposed to look at. Like the bodies on bodies in Kalelus in the Grand Canyon. But nowhere throughout the entire terrestrial land and sky do disc, spheres, or globes exist. Despite their seeming existence, they are entirely lens created. The telescope, telescope and television, they put the image inception in our children's minds. They are entirely lens created. They represent the most striking examples of lens illusions. 
ever known to man. Flat drop. One on one. And all praise to why. You know, for the opportunity to sign up, man. To know that we're here. And that we've always, uh, we've always been here, man. And this was, uh, some type of spell we've been under to think we're spinning on a damn ball, man. Hey, hop to the real ones, man. Keep surfing. The way. Yeah, man.